Howdy fellow model railroaders, my name is Kevin Brown and I want to thank you for checking out my YouTube channel. As you can tell from the title of this episode, I'm going to be going over some of the basic plans for uh, expansion of the Brownsville Terminal Railroad. I'm still not completely convinced that's the way I'm going to go, uh, but I thought I'd try and draw it out and figure out how much I can, more I can do in the space back here that I'm going to have. Uh, before we get to that, I'd like to show you some additions to my uh, uh, rolling stock and layout, so I hope you enjoy. Thank you very much. Here comes the newest addition to my Amtrak fleet, the new Viewliner baggage car. Uh, it's a wonderful model. It's been showing up, the prototype's been showing up on the uh, Texas Eagle going through town, which is a superliner equipped train. Uh, so I think this really will add to the uh, superliner train. and. Uh, I, I really like it. Really nice car. The other new addition to my lineup is uh, I've been uh, for some time collecting the old Atlas uh, sets of Chicago Northwestern coal hoppers and I finally got enough together to make a nice unit train. I think that looks fairly good. I still have to uh, uh, do some work on couplers and stuff but uh, the big problem with these Atlas hoppers is they're pretty darn light so I had to do some modifications to that and I'll show you how that worked out in just a sec. Here's one of the new uh, coal cars taken apart, as you can see. I added all sorts of little shot and some uh, diluted white glue. Brought this up from a weight of right around half an ounce to right at an ounce. And I also had to cut back the little prongs here that held in place of those room for the ballast, or for the, uh, yeah, my ballast. So, uh, all in all, not a bad little project. I still have to uh, invest in some microtrains trucks, but at that point, this uh, this uh, unit train will be ready to rock. Oh, uh, other thing, here's my CMX cleaning car. Started working with that. There's some places on the layout it doesn't like so far. I got to figure out what's going on, but uh, just a couple times around the layout, it picked up a lot of gunk. So it obviously does what it needs to do. I'm just going to have to figure out how to make it work on my layout a little better. So, making progress there too. Now on to the layout plans. Uh, I suppose the first step is to show the space that I have available in some detail. And then I want to do some quick sketches, show some quick sketches of the possibilities for expanding this layout into that space. Uh, so, uh, we'll start off with looking at the space. And I warn you, it's not for the faint of heart because it's really full of a lot of junk. You wouldn't know it to look at it. I've been weeding this out for a while now and there's still a lot to go. Uh, my goal, as I probably told you, is to have uh, all this stuff uh, ready to start working on by Christmas break. It means I've got to move a lot of stuff between now and then, but I'm uh, making progress. So anyway, uh, without further ado, here's the space available to me. Okay, by way of reference, here's the layout as it stands now. Uh, the room is more or less divided into two equal segments. This segment is the one that's going to be reserved for my gaming hobby, and I've made progress on that, and that means that the gaming table that my uh, layout's been staying on uh, happily for a while is going to be more used, so it's time to start thinking about where else to put it. Now, trying not to make anybody motion sick, the space I have available starts on... This side of the chimney and extends down to that wall, that wall, and come down here, an equal space, which will probably end up being about halfway through that printer. Uh, overall dimensions, around 12 foot square uh, with some issues. You'll notice that I have a place that's wonderful for collecting junk a shelf roughly 30 some about 30 inches wide along two edges of what will be the layout space and uh, I can show you in a little more detail why that's necessary 
Uh, on the bright side, I don't have from this uh, space here, I do not have to, I can go right up to it. There's plenty of aisle space on this side left over. And behind this wall is a rather useless room that I might be able to expand into for uh, staging yards and things of that nature. Let me take a quick look over there and I'll explain some more. Okay, I've stepped over to the other side. This is my work area, which is full of, as usual, stuff. But you can see the foundation footings come out and down, clear around this part of the basement, which is why I had to have those uh, extensions over there, which limits the space. There's 30 inches or so. It's going to have to be reserved. Can't go any closer than that. And here is the other side of the wall I was pointing to. The layout space is just over there. And this is the space that, with any luck at all, I can use for storage yards and things of that nature. It's not the, it has a brick floor and it tends to be rather a damp place. So I really don't want to expand the layout itself into this, at least not current, not for a while. But for the moment, it does have some uses and can be used in the planning. So now that you've seen the space and the terrible amount of stuff I've got to move out, uh, I'd like to go over some quick drawings and plans, and uh, well, I'll, I'll talk to you in a sec. Okay, here's the rough outline of the room as I described it. Uh, I'm The black lines, of course, are the solid walls. The red line here is that ledge that has to be taken into account. Here's the dotted lines over here representing the... Uh, other room nearby that we could use if necessary. There's the chimney. That was a point of reference. So uh, based on this, uh, each square is a, is a foot, more or less. This is a gross approximation. Uh, let me draw in. There's two different possibilities for the expansion. I'll draw them uh, the first one in and show you next. Okay, so here's where everything started out as far as the design. You'll see that it allows for all of my main cities to be more or less in the same spot. There's Brownsville, Thomasboro, Missiopolis, and the addition of a new yard. Uh, had a lot going for it. It takes into account the ledge that has to be uh, reckoned with, so I can't go all the way to the wall. Ends up with about eight and a half feet of uh, space on each, uh, eight and a half feet square of space in the middle to play with. Uh, it's got a lot going for it, but there's just a couple problems. First off, it has no space for any staging yard, and second, and more importantly, Brownsville module just doesn't work like that, and I'll show you what I mean in a second. All right, here's the end of the Brownsville module, and you can see that a new corner system would have to curve off this way, and that would leave these being very tiny little stub tracks if I just stopped it there. So I, I didn't take too long to figure out this basic scheme wasn't going to work out terribly well. But I had another idea uh, that utilizes the space on the other side, and I think it's far more workable. Let me show you. Okay, here's the new design, and I think a better design. The city of Brownsville and its passenger terminal are now butted up against the wall. Uh, what that means is now there's space for staging and utilizing the Brownsville tracks to get into the staging. It uh, also means that this yard becomes a stub yard coming to the... So uh, uh, that little bit there could kind of help hide the problems with uh, the end of the Brownsville terminal. All in all, I think it's a much better design, much more staging. Uh, uses a little bit of the room next door. Um, yeah, it's got a lot going for it. Uh, I still have questions whether it's a particularly u good use of space, but in general, it would allow me to more than double, way more than double the size of my layout and continue to use the modules and the work I've done already. So that's uh, a plus. So I'm definitely, I'm still kicking this around, but I'd be very curious to see what everybody thinks, if they can understand my hen scratching here. Uh, if you've got any suggestions, please let me know in the uh, comments. I would very much appreciate it. Oh, and just to let you know, I've got my helpers here now. Oscar and now Mia. So I think they've got the seal of approval. So hopefully 
uh, we'll see if this is what's going to be the uh, the final design. So that kind of sums up where I'm at as far as uh, design, still incorporating the modules. Uh, I would appreciate any input, any suggestions anybody would have. Uh, I'm Again, I'm not convinced that that's the way I want to go, but it has a lot of advantages going for it. There's a, another layout, which I'm going to talk about next time, found in an old model railroader. And uh, I think it has great potential for the space as well. Uh, obviously, it would be an abandonment of the uh, modular approach and strike out on something new. Um, so next video, I will try and talk about that possibility in a little more depth. And I'll play around with the design here for a little bit more as well. So, you know, uh, that's kind of where I'm as far as this layout design. Um, as far as my group, the end scale of Bloomington Normal, this has kind of been uh, kind of a dead time. We have another uh, visit to Castle Gardens uh, the first Sunday in September. And I believe it's the third Saturday and Sunday in September is the Decatur Train Show. That's a big deal. We'll, we'll be there and there'll be a, a, have some video from that. So that's what's going on with that. Um, as always, please thank you for watching, and if you like what you've seen, please subscribe, and I'll catch you next time. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.